Antes que nada, quisiera agradecer el honor que me confieren al haberme invitado para ser su maestra de ceremonias. Mi nombre es Mary López Gallo, colaboro con la cadena Univisión Radio aquí en San Diego. Produzco desde hace ya muchos años un programa de radio que se llama De Viva Voz. Pero en lo personal, eh, creo que eh, nobleza obliga, eh, tengo que rendir un homenaje a todos ustedes, porque para mí ha sido muy, muy importante el poder tener el español y el inglés en mi vida. Yo creo que han sido las la clave para el éxito en mi carrera profesional y es una cuestión que a mí en lo particular me ha costado mucho porque tengo dos hijas eh, que se han, a, las hemos criado aquí en San Diego desde muy chiquititas y para mí siempre fue muy importante el hacer que las niñas hablaran perfecto español y que lo escribieran. Eh, a lo mejor alguien aquí me va a aventar un tomatazo, pero me voy a, me voy a aventar a, a, a decirles el, el siguiente comentario. Yo siempre les he dicho a mis hijas que yo no soy jamás eh, he, he tolerado el racismo, que soy una persona eh, muy tolerante con todas las denominaciones religiosas, eh, las preferencias sexuales de las personas, pero que no soy racista, pero que sí soy pochista. <risa> Así es que siempre les he dicho que respeten mucho su español cuando hablan español y que obviamente cuando hablan en inglés hagan lo propio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to this third day of uh, your uh, convention. I am so pleased to meet you all. My name is Mary Lopez Gallo. I'm the Community Affairs Director for Univision Radio. And this morning, I would like to uh, ask uh, Dr. Santiago Wood to please join me on stage. He's the Executive Director for NAVE, and he has some welcoming remarks. Un aplauso para él, por favor. Buenos días, mi gente. Buenos días. Good morning, no le oigo. Buenos días. Xin chao. Hola. Guten tag. Sabadí. Shalom. Nijo. Hello. Yache. What's up? <laughs> Aren't you having a fabulous conference? This, I can, I'm like a... a, a Mi hermano, mi primo, este, el doctor Luis Cruz. Somos hermanos, somos primos. Yo soy de Panamá, Puerto Rico, él de Centroamérica, así que somos hermanos. That's my blood brother. So I can do the same thing that he does, all right? But we, we are so glad and so pleased that you're here with us. I know that a lot of you had a great time last night. Some of you are still enjoying the great city of San Diego, and I see a lot of stragglers coming in. But I want to first thank all of the folks that were involved in making this conference a great success. Join me in giving a hand to the local committee, to all the people that were honored, to everyone who had a hand. Our board, the mayor of the city came out to meet with us, the vice president of the Padres, and he did promise that they're going to raffle some tickets for Nabe folks, so those of you you may get a surprise. We had a raffle. We ask you, let's celebrate the exhibitors. Uh, they spend lots of money to truck all of their uh, instructional materials and to be here as strong supporters of NABE. I urge you to go over. They're going to be giving away a lot of freebies. They don't want to take it back with them. So just go by the exhibitor booths next door. Give them your card, say hello, and you may be surprised. I know that there was a big raffle by some of the exhibitors for, I think it was two $500 uh, certificate and a couple of iPods. So please, let's give a hand to exhibitors and be sure to go over and, and claim your prize. You know, um, yesterday, well, as we opened the conference with Dr. Alma Flor Ada, and she really gave all of us a challenge. She said, being educated is great. That's a must. We got to emphasize that. But you really talk about having our humanity and not letting it get lost or absorbed by technology. She talked about, she told us a little bit about Paulo Freire's dialogue, about Cesar Chavez, about Martin Luther King, about the fact that everything that we do in education, it is not a sprint or it's not a marathon. But, you know, it's a relay. So all of the wonderful folks who have planted that initial seed, you know, we have to carry it. So we want to celebrate all of the first timers that came to NAVE, esos maestros y maestras que vinieron por primera vez. Le damos una buena mano de celebración a ustedes. Y ahora le vamos a pasar a ustedes el bastón para que ustedes traigan 
a Las Vegas in 2015, a 10 de sus compañeros, a 10. And there's one special person we have to celebrate. This is an amazing t uh, principal. Just became a principal of a school in New York. And this principal used what we learned from mi primo, you know, Dr. Luis Cruz. He talked about leadership. He talked about being merchants of hope. He talked about saving lives. He talked about the fact of collaboration. This one principal uh, from New York, se me el nombre de la directora de Nueva York, she brought 10 of her directors and folks with her. Le damos una gran mano a ella. Felicidades, felicidades. That is real leadership. That is collaboration. That is really being a merchant of hope. And I urge all of you, NABE no es solamente para hispanos latinos o parlante del español. NABE, it's a national association for bilingual education and biliteracy. It includes all of our various cultures and tongues and languages. So let's give you all a hand. We have about 30 states represented here at NABE, about 30 states. We have about seven foreign countries. We have about 40 different languages. So we know that the six official languages of the UN is Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian and Spanish. There are six official languages of the United Nations. And we believe we have that representation here. And I urge you, those of you that want to see other speakers here at NABE, international speakers that represent other cultures and tongues, please, please, please send me an email. Is drsantiagow at gmail.com and I guarantee you our board, our board will see to it that that happens. And so give yourselves a hand, but get us the information. Be activists. Be activists. It's your association. It's not ours. And all of us collectively will make it work. And finally, today we have an amazing, amazing presentation. We have someone who has served our military really well put herself on the line, has done amazing work for parents throughout this nation, has been a really recognized published author, una persona que tiene ganas y fuerza, and we are going to now hear another message. So we had two amazing, great messages. We have the third message, which wraps up our conference. And finally, 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 I've got to say to all of you, I was really humbled and honored to be bestowed La medalla Isabela la Católica yesterday by the government of Spain. Parece un segundo. By the government of Spain. But I don't accept this just for myself. It's a personal honor. But it's for a board, a NABE board of 10 members who serve selflessly. They do not collect a dime in salary. The board serve. They have their own full-time jobs in researching and directing schools. And so as much as I accept this, as a personal tribute to the work that I do and I've done for many years with a lot of teachers in Spain and Mexico and Brazil and Canada. I accept this on behalf of a great NABE board who has allowed me to provide leadership to this great association. And for that, I am really humble and honored to you. Would the NABE board members please stand that are here. They serve without a dime of compensation except for their love of what they want to do. So now you can all call me Don Santiago. Thank you. Dios le bendiga. Thank you very much. Gracias. Don Santiago, muchas gracias por su pasión verdaderamente contagiosa. And now, please, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Yi Wan, NABE board member, to come forward to present the NABE Citizen of the Year Award. Un aplauso para ella, por favor. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning honored guests, NABE members, and conference attendees. It is my great honor to present NABE's Citizen of the Year Award to Dr. Lori Olson. And she is a very special individual bilingual advocate. So Lori, please come up to stage. Yes, Lori. So, okay, so Lori, please just stand. 
I just want to share some information about Lori's credential. Dr. Olson has spent her professional life advocating for English learners and their families and is a strong supporter of bilingual education. As an advocate, Dr. Olson has assumed the role of author, teacher, researcher, director, and friends to all who looked for her support and guidance. For two decades, she led the groundbreaking work of California Tomorrow for Equity and Inclusion Society and is widely recognized as the architect of that organization's equity-centered education reform work at school site, community, and policy level. From her landmark book in the 1990s, Made in America, Immigrant Students in Our Public Schools, to numerous California Tomorrow publications, and her more recent publication, including Reparable Harm, fulfilling the uncapped promise of educational opportunity for California's long-term English learners, and an advocacy toolkit for connecting the Common Core State Standards to English learners. Laurie has given voice to children who are rarely heard in centers of power at the state or national level. Her mission to improve English learner achievement has been realized in her work with various California districts, as well as her leadership role in developing California's Seal of Biliteracy Initiative. This resulted in California being the first state in the nation to pass legislation to honor the biliteracy of graduating seniors. Laurie's current work with Sobrato Early Academic Language Initiative now connects five districts in Northern California, affording opportunities for English learner students to be provided exceptional bilingual schooling and to develop primary language literacy. Her advocacy continues with her continuing to play a lead role with Californians Together, which she co-founded in 1998. At a personal level, I met Lori 20 years ago when I was a student in a master's program getting ready to write my master's thesis. The chair of the committee suggested that I contact Lori to get to seek guidance and advice from her. And from there on, I have been so inspired by her work. I followed her research and her advocacy work, which had inspire me profoundly and she has such a great impact on the work that I do right now and that's the reason, one of the reasons that I committed and passionate to serve on NABE. So thank you Lori for your guidance and your valuable contributions to English learners and their families. So please join me in celebrating and congratulating Lori for being the citizen of the year. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, and thank you so much to Nabe for this, this real honor. I'm deeply moved by it, both for the recognition of work done, but also for the support and affirmation I can carry into all the work that is yet for us all to do to sh see to it that English learners aren't left behind in this Common Core era. Um, I miss my parents incredibly today. Um, they would have been very proud that I'm getting this particular award. They raised me in a household um, and community of people and ideas and books and music and immersion in social justice movements around the globe. They instilled in me a very deep belief in the necessity and the possibility of people working together to envision, fight for, and create a more just world. And the models of their life remain with me always as what a life of integrity and real commitment to social justice looks like. So mom and dad, this is for you too. Um, You know, research and writing and preparing speeches in many ways is a very solitary set of tasks. And um, for all of us in moments of advocacy, um, it's a very individual 
process of reaching deep into our own reserves of courage and voice to really speak out, um, speak power, uh, speak truth to power. Um, but in fact, effective advocacy is not something that is done alone. And I've been just enormously privileged to have participated in and been part of building um, organizations and coalitions that do this work together. Coalitions to, dedicated to English learner success, dedicated to educational opportunity for all, dedicated to language rights. And so California Tomorrow, Kabe, Californians Together have been part and parcel of my work all along the way. And I can't really accept this award as if it's all my individual work because it's been the really dedicated, passionate, smart people that I work with in those coalitions that have really um, given my work the life and the reach that it's had. Um, so I would be amiss to, to not mention some of them. I know many of you are here in the audience, Carla, I think of Martha and Jan and Francisca, et cetera, but particularly I want to do a shout out to my dear friend, mentor, leader, comrade, Shelley Spiegel Coleman. So thanks, Shelley. <laughs> um, and finally, <laughs> Um, a lot of the, the advocacy work and work I do is truthfully motivated by anger and rage at the harms that I see being done in our schools to English learners and their families, the ways in which our education erodes their connection to language and culture and really forecloses their life chances. But what wakes me up in the morning, what gets me going, what keeps me at this work is really the sight and the knowledge um, and the memory of the classrooms full of kids, like in my demonstration sites, of these bright, engaged, motivated, confident kids learning together about the world, constructing knowledge together, and being so articulate in two languages. And that's what keeps me going, as, and that's what will continue to keep me going as we move forward. But knowing that um, I've been honored, that I have the recognition of this amazing organization, NABE, um, just means the world to me. So thank you very much. Next, joining me on stage is the NABE Vice President, Dr. Julio Cruz, and she will, um, he will present the Elva Helwing Scholarship Award. Good morning. Have you had fun in this conference? Good. That picture of me up there, that was taken, uh, that's how I look with uh, makeup on. <laughs> A little bit of hair. I want to talk to you first a little bit about Eva Helwing. Who was Eva Helwing? Eva Helwing was a principal in Chicago, principal of Inter-American Magnet School. She was my daughter's principal. But Eva Helwing came to the United States knowing no English from Austria. She spoke, I think, with three languages when she came here. However, they couldn't and she was way ahead of everybody else in fifth grade. But she was held back a grade because she spoke no English. However, she went on. And she went on and graduated high school, went to college, and became, became one of the best principals in Chicago. But not only that, one of the first principals, non-Hispanic, who decided that she was going to advocate for bilingual children. Eva went on and after becoming a principal, she learned Spanish and spoke it fluently, indicating that what Santiago always said, si se puede. So I am pleased tonight, today, to announce the first, the first NAVE Eva, Eva Hillwing Award recipient, Aracelis Alvarez. She is a master's student at San, San Francisco, San Francisco State University. 
I'm sorry, Loyola Marymount University. This award was established to provide support to university students pursuing a career in bilingual education. Many applications were received and reviewed, and the applicant, and the applicant chosen by the NABE, was by the NABE board. It wasn't by one person or two persons. The 2014 award is in the amount of $2,000. We wish we could give $50,000 because we know how much a master's and a doctorate program costs. But unfortunately, the funds are low. We can't give that much. The Jose Marti Scholarship Fund is also contributing $1,000 towards the award. The entire grant will be sent to Araceli to, so that she can uh, pursue her post-secondary education. It will be sent to the institution, or to, to the person. What I'd like to say here today also, the fact that there's a fund, but we need more money, folks. We want to provide more scholarships and more money to the recipients. So we welcome, we welcome your donations to the Ava Helwing Scholarship Fund. If you can't remember Ava Helwing, just send it to the NABE Scholarship Fund. We know where it'll be going. I would also like to acknowledge today the presence of the Jose Marti Foundation, Dr. Anailda Badia. Please stand up. The Jose Marti Foundation has decided that they will partner with us and provide a scholarship funds every year, scholarship money every year. So thank you, Anailda, thank you, Jose Marti Scholarship Fund. Um, right now, I just want to provide a little bit more information about our award recipient, Arisela Alvarez. I'm sure that you can read her information in the, the program, but something that I really would highlight is that Arisela was a product of bilingual education. And after graduating with her master's degree, she felt her passion is in education. So she decided to return to school to get her teaching credential in bilingual education and a master's degree. So that's because of her passion, her belief in bilingual education. She wanted other kids to have a similar experience and to benefit from bilingual education just like herself. So she is now a mother working really hard to support her family and her her own education and she's really committed and she'll be getting her degree by May of 2014 from Loyola Marymount University. So today she's unable to join us because of her demanding schedule. She had to work on weekends. So, but we really want to congratulate her and to really wish her the very best in becoming an outstanding bilingual teacher and serving our children. Thank you. And I would now like to ask Dr. Arnilda Badia, Legislative Advisor to NAVE Board, and Mr. Eudes Budai, NAVE Board Member, to come forward to present the Jose Martí Award. Un aplauso, por favor. Good morning. Buenos días. Today, uh, I have the pleasure to present the National Jose Martí Scholarship Award. We started I presenting this award last year here in, at NAVE. The Jose Marti Foundation presents this award to a dedicated and highly effective teacher in the field of ESL and dual language instruction. This year, the recipient of the award is Dorina Sackman. She's an ESO teacher from Orange County Public Schools who was also the recipient of the 2014 Florida Teacher of the Year. <laughs> F 
For the past 15 years, Dorina has been educating and believing in dual language learners from all around the globe. From third grade to seniors in high school, she treats her classrooms as a stage for children to celebrate their, their diversity backgrounds while still learning English and the needs they have to become lifelong learners. As president of the Jose Marti Foundation, it is indeed my honor to present to Dorina Sackman the National Jose Marti Scholarship Award. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm a teacher, and I am so proud. That's right. I'm a teacher. And I teach ESOL. And that's not English of speakers of other languages. That's every student obviously learns. And that's what it's about. And I just love the fact that this actually happened to me, because really what I'm just so excited about is I was just allowed to enter the Global International and Comparative Education Program for a doctorate at the University of Central Florida. And I am so excited. That way, we can put our children more on the map than they already are, because that's what we do every single day. But I cannot thank you more, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, Arnilda Badia, for what you did, for Nilda for inviting me here. This is my first NABE conference, and I'm so excited, because now I'm done. I'll see you in Vegas, everybody, because that's where I'm going to be. But what really is amazing is that I have become a national finalist for the nation's teacher of the year. And why I'd like to mention that is because this is the first time the CCSSO has chosen an ESOL teacher since 1952 when it started. It means that our children, and I say this with such emotion, are being recognized and our desire to close the achievement gap and to make sure every single child learns, regardless of socioeconomic background, regardless of linguistic ability, and that everyone in this room, I am actually doing this for all of us, so that our children can be noticed and recognized, so that if I do win on April 28th, and I stand at the White House lawn with the President and the 50 other State Teachers of the Year, you know that our voices of our children have been heard and we're giving them a voice and that is so important. So I ask you, after this amazing conference that has uplifted so many people, the acronym for this year that I give all teachers, because it is one of the most difficult times to be a teacher right now. It is so tiring, but this is uplifting and we need to uplift ourselves and elevate this profession because we need to believe. And think of the word believe, B-E-L-I-E-V-E. -E B, the educators who live to inspire and empower via excellence. And from the words of my students, gracias, shukran, obrigada, merci, chvala, spasiva. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, the Jose Mordi Foundation is going to give you $1,000 for your studies, and NAVE is matching that amount. So you will be receiving oh $2,000 so you can continue at the university doing your, what you dream to do. I love NAVE. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would now like to ask Dr. Maria E. Frankis, Dean of the College of Education at the University of Utah, to come forward to announce the NABE Bilingual Research Award. Un aplauso también, por favor. Buenos días. The Bilingual Research Journal is the premier research journal for NABE, and it covers a wide range of topics relating to bilingual education, bilingualism in society, and the world, 
and language policy and education. It's published three times a year, and it depends heavily on volunteers. We have at least 300 reviewers for the journal at this time. So NABE and the Bilingual Research Journal Board presents an Early Career Reviewer Award and a Senior Scholar Reviewer Award in order to acknowledge that work behind the scenes that is volunteer service to the organization and to the journal. Today, we'd like to present the Bilingual Research Journal's 2013 Early Career Reviewer Award to Dr. Veronica Valdez. Veronica could not be here today, but one of her students, Juan Freire, will receive the award in her honor. Juan? I'd like you to know that Dr. Valdez teaches in the Department of Education, Culture, and Society. She received the PhD from the University of Texas at Austin in curriculum and instruction, and she's reviewed for the journal for seven years. Her research examines equity issues within dual language education. Y lo hizo con mis lentes hoy. <laughs> este, today we also have another wonderful award for the 2013 Senior Scholar Reviewer Award, which goes to Dr. Yolanda Padron. Please come up, Yolanda. Yolanda Padron is a professor of bilingual education in the College of Education at Texas A&M University. She was formerly professor at the University of Houston, where she served as co-director in the National Center for Research on Education, Diversity, and Excellence. Dr. Padron has reviewed for the journal for almost 30 years. Her research centers on classroom observation research in order to improve instruction for bilingual learners. For your service, to NABE and the BRJ, we sincerely thank you, Dr. Padron. Thank you. Thank you. One last minute, Dorinda. We expect you to become a reviewer and a contributor to the journal in the future because doctoral students is really at least half of the reviewers for the journal. Good luck. I believe I have to ask to the podium, uh, Consuelo Castillo, is she here? Oh, no? Okay. Dr. Abadia? Dr. Anilda Badia, please give her a, a big round of applause. Good morning again, buenos dias de nuevo. Today I'm going to introduce a person that is so important in my life that it's difficult for me to even introduce her, but I'm going to try my best. Consuelo Castillo Kickbush is a renowned, charismatic, passionate, and influential speaker with a mission to empower the next generation of leaders. Born and raised along the border in a small barrio in Laredo. Consuelo is a very familiar with the challenges of poverty, discrimination, and illiteracy. Although she grew up without material wealth, Consuelo was taught by her immigrant parents that she was rich in culture, tradition, values, and faith. The values Consuelo learned as a child were reinforced throughout her career in the United States military. After graduating from Hardin Simmons University, Consuelo entered the US Army as an officer and served for two decades, 
During that time, she broke barriers and set records in the military where she became the highest ranking Hispanic woman in the combat support field of the U.S. Army. Consuelo has produced several materials as trademarked tools to reinforce her messages. She also published a book titled Journey to the Future, a Roadmap for Success for Youth in English and Spanish. I really urge you to get that book after her presentation in the back of the room. The book provides practical techniques techniques for children to develop higher self-esteem and achieve personal goals while establishing a, a framework for early leadership development. Consuelo's dedication to the youth of America has garnered her numerous awards and citations from educational institutions, government agencies, professional organizations, and the national media. She has touched my life in many, many ways. Therefore, it is indeed a pleasure and an honor to introduce to you a lady that means so much to me, my dear friend, Consuelo. ¿Cómo estás, manita? Me dijo a Santiago que le hiciera un favor. ¿Dónde está tu teléfono? Ma? Ah, dáselo a mi manito. Ahí va, profesor. Buenos días. You're bilingual. I say that whenever I open other conferences, just to mess with people. But I know that I'm home with my raza. I'm home with you, my, my fellow bilingue. So uh, thanks to my teacher. Good morning. OK. And to all of the young people, because I devote my life. When I was asked, what do you do? People ask me all the time, you know? They said, so what do you do? I heard about you. And I tell people, yeah, because I'm a street walker. And they start walking back. I go, ah, no, that didn't come out right. I, I didn't code switch correctly. I work, I work with children. I work with familias. And every once in a while, because I think people think I know so much, they invite me to nice food, food places like this. And I eat all your food. But uh, I speak teenager, so what's up, man? <laughs> I, I wish I could take the time to identify all of you who have been my champions, who have been my angels on earth. Uh, I don't wish to offend anyone, but I love you all. You know who you are. You're my friends. You fight the big fight uh, along your own districts. You, you speak for the for those that need to be heard, and to the NAVE board, to mi hermanito, mi boricua brother. I learned in Puerto Rico, where I taught at the University of Puerto Rico. Eh, uepa! So, whether you like it or not, I'm boricua too. But I even learned in Puerto Rico that we do have differences in cultures and languages. When I went to Puerto Rico to buy something at the grocery store, I didn't realize that I was wearing uh, leggings, you know, that one size that does fit. <laughs> Admit it. The Burger King t-shirt that I got at the exhibit at one conference. You're visualizing. <laughs> and the tennis shoes that my perro uses for therapy. But if you ever go to Puerto Rico, and you go, it don't matter if you go to the La Tiendita, Puerto Rican women are dressed ready for the Miss Universe competition. <laughs> Boricuas, admit it. 
And they always wear everything in sets. El collar, el anillo, el bracelet. Don't lie, doctora, don't lie. Don't lie. That's the truth. And then when you go to Puerto Rico, I thought that when they did this nonverbal, I thought it meant, welcome to Puerto Rico. When they saw me dressed like that, that's the way they greeted me. And I greeted everybody like that. Until I met a, a, another Boricua who claimed to be Neo Rican. I was just getting to know the Puerto Ricans. <laughs> then, so the Neo Rican said to me, because you all are different. <laughs> I mean, she gave me attitude. She just said, Mira, nena, que lo que tu traes high. <laughs> I said, I don't understand. I, I'm okay. I, I got it. I got it, man. And she, you know, she kept her hand like, and she goes, no, 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 go friend, go friend. Hear me out. <laughs> okay, I'm Neo Rican. I'm gonna tell you to your face. <laughs> she goes, they weren't saying welcome to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I go, they weren't? She goes, no, they were saying, mira esta porquería que está haciendo aquí. <laughs> she said, girlfriend, do me a favor, all right, for real. I said, okay. That's my word in English that gets you out of trouble, okay. <laughs> she said, next time you go out with me, do something. <laughs> See, we, we Mexicanos, we're not like that. We're not rude like that. <laughs> no, no, we wait till you go to the bathroom, then we shred you to pieces. No, 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 we, we, we pretend like we like you. <laughs> but once you go to the bathroom, did you see, did you see? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and so bilingualism or biculturalism or multiculturalism really is about the idea of being a blessing. You know, people speak about diversity as a difference. If we all were together and there was a crisis, trust me, there's nobody there that's different. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly wore the uniform of the United States and I raised my hand to defend our country against all enemies, foreign and domestic, but we got enough enemies right here who don't stand up for democracy. We don't need to go too far. We don't need to go too far in somebody else's land and be able to tell them, now you all be nice when we are not learning how to be nice to each other back here. We have to stand up for acceptance and respect just the other day, check this out. <laughs> they called me from MIT. Now he has that foo foo college. <laughs> okay. And they said, uh, Colonel Kickbush? I said, uh huh. Uh, you've been accepted to be at MIT. I said, oh, and you know, you have to pretend like you're okay. <laughs> I said, oh, really? I'm, I'm very glad that you've chosen me. Oh, yes, ma'am. We'd like for you to speak and lecture to the faculty of MIT. And he said, oh, okay. Say, okay. I said, okay, thank you very much. And you know, typical Latina, I want my MIT! And then, and then total panic. Y que frega was it ahí? What am I going to do at MIT? <laughs> the last time I practiced my scientific research was, woo, olvídate. <laughs> but those are the, why do we stand up in places that we are perhaps don't feel comfortable? Just like I'm standing up here before you, 
I'm still nervous. I'm still scared. Because every time we want to do our best, a little paranoia is OK. <laughs> so we should always want to do the best. Always want to do the best. And so they said, we have a special luncheon for you and all the deans at MIT. And I, you know, I said, ¿Y qué les digo a estos vatos? <laughs> what do I say? And, then, and, then, and so the uh, admissions dean was there. And he said, uh, we're very happy to have you here. We understand that you do uh, a lot of outreach work, that you, uh, we believe you've worked with over one million children, and that you definitely understand the landscape of America. You know, and I said, uh, OK. <laughs> I, said, I said, Dean, with all due respect, I wish to ask of you of a question. What is the criteria other than you look for the valedictorian, the salutatorian? You look for the top 1% at America's most successful high schools and around the world. For those that have made the cut to believe that they have a seat at one of our Ivy League schools, MIT. I said, I would like to present to you that you brought in this criteria, that you would think for a second of a young man, a young lady, in the migrant fields of Salinas, Woo! or in the apple fields of Bridgeport, Washington, or that you would consider a young boy in a Immokalee, Florida? Or did you think of a young child on Pilsen Street in the center of Chicago? That you would think of a Gilroy, California? Woo! And then these babies, dare I say, our babies, they're the translators for their parents. They're the surrogate moms and dads for their parents. Because see, America allows 22 jobs by Congress to pay somebody who does work like labor work less than minimum wage. Because you see, Dean, this child is a translator. He spends nights and days in an emergency room because their mother or their father or their tia or their abuelo will be the last ones to be because they don't have insurance. And this child, Dean, works 40 hours a week alongside his parents, goes out and helps mommy, papi, whether it's in a Korean restaurant that's just getting started or a Vietnamese restaurant. This child comes from Sudan, like Mohammed, and he lands in Omaha, as he said. And this child, Dean, works 40 hours a week. But you know what, Dean? He's got a 3.7. She's got a 3.7. Let me ask you, Dean, does this child have a seat at MIT? And the dean said, as of today, they do. <laughs> they do. Because this child, according to my barrio math, has a 5.5. <laughs> what determines intellect? What determines brilliance? I think of another story. There's a real fufu school, uh, Santa Clara. Uh, you have a, you have a, it's a fufu school. Se ríe la Dr. Ramsey because, but anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a distinguished lecture series, okay? And the night before, they have a big endowment, mucha feria. And uh, it's, it's, you get served by a five-star chef, whatever that means. Le tienes tortas? No. Pero went. I went ahead and I ate the three anorexic shrimp. Pero went. That's okay. That's okay. 
the lettuce was bigger than the, the shrimp, pero bueno. <laughs> and were two students sitting there uh, who were encouraged to have dinner with me. And the, um, the young lady, uh, she said, Señor Consuelo, sí, mija. And she started to get very emotional. She said, Tengo mucha pena because I let you down. So I heard you speak in middle school. Hey, <laughs> but you made it here? What are you crying about? <laughs> she said, because I got stuck on the SAT. I got stuck on the SAT. He said, they had this word, Senor Consuelo, and I could not, I just couldn't identify it. It's regatta. And so next to her was a young man from a private boarding school, you know, the kind that wears the little coat of arms <laughs> on the jacket. And so the young man with the coat of arms on the jacket said, oh, regatta, <laughs> how sad. You don't know your aquatic sports. And my poor Latina, you know, she goes, well, see, she goes, I don't know regatta. She said, but you know, I do know one thing. I've, I've grown up with charreadas. <laughs> and the young man said, char, 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 She goes, oh, how sad you don't know your equestrian sports. <laughs> but the truth is, what made it to the SAT? Not charreadas, regatta me. So I'm glad when our researchers, our hermanas are here and you're writing and you're questioning, what is the true measurement of intellect? We must stop and think, how do our children learn? And what do they learn first? And does that not have value? To all the honorees, starting with a doctora, que bonito. I think of her as a living legend. To all of you who have been honored, que bonito. It's so wonderful to see Luis. Donde estas, hijo? You know, he was this chavalito, you know? He had a young family. Te acuerdas, hijo? Te acuerdas? But now he's a PhD, a Pachuco highly developed. That's good. That's why they gave him a dissertation. <laughs> Approval. The truth of the matter is, if I want to just show you my first slide. I'm the proud daughter of immigrants. Yo vengo de, de raíces. They don't have Gucci Pucci or Armani. They don't even know the Vato Armani. But I will never, ever be ashamed of where my heart, mi corazón, where my first teachers came from, mis padres. These are my parents. These are my mommy and my papi. They are my heroes. They're not with me physically. They will always be with me in my heart. How many of you are willing to admit you are a cum laude graduate of La Chancla Academy? <laughs> Okay, we're going to have a workshop on coping, <laughs> letting go. Do you remember your mother would torture you psychologically? I'm doing this because I love you. And you say, well, don't love me. Why don't you hate me for the next three years? Well, no, no, and then the real one. This is going to hurt me. Me duele más a mí que a ti. So we say, okay, we'll turn around. <laughs> what did they teach me? Teachers, you want to know how to connect with children? Listen to their stories. Start with giving them a chance to draw you a picture of what their life is. But don't look at it from the pobrecito frame. Look at it from the wonderful and the ability of what they've done. Mira, 
We didn't grow up with Toys R Us. It was Toys I Make. <laughs> How many of you like my purse? Bueno, it's a placemat, people. <laughs> they talk about thinking outside the box. We didn't have a freaking box. We had to think every single day of our lives. That's why MIT needs our scientists, our creators. We had to make things work. I grew up with this wonderful father, my papi. He loved America, for real. He could never go to Mexico without standing up when he got to the word America. He would always stand up every single day until he was 83 when the Lord took him. He said, he would always say, <coughs> America! Just like that. And when you're this big, you really think that's Disney World. <laughs> they, my dad would tell me, adelante, hija, adelante, adelante. Nunca crea que no se puede, por qué no? I used to think, why not? Why not me? And I believe that that's what we have to do with our babies, our children. We've got to test. When they tell you, no, me, no puedo, ¿por qué no? ¿Cómo que no puedes? Come here. I start taking the chancla and they get it. They get it. Our children, we don't need to water down the curriculum. We need to raise it up. We need to raise it up. They can do it. They just need a little motivation. <laughs> I learned ethics from my father. I learned high quality from my mommy. I'm the daughter of a maid, folks. I'm the daughter of a maid that cleaned toilets. But she didn't just clean them. She made them sparkle. You know, when you're a young teenager and kids like me have to go work with your parents, you know, I used to go and, I, and my mother always had something for us to do. How many of you were raised by the mother that could never talk to you in a normal tone, even when you were two inches from them? Cazuela! And you're like, ama, ama, Cazuela! And you're like, I'm here. <laughs> Forget it, just go along. So when, you, when parents talk to teachers, don't, don't, don't call the, anybody. They just communicate. And I, in that moment, my mother was, was telling, Consuelo, limpia el baño. And I would go clean the other toilet. And of course, she always tell me, y que brille, make sure it's sparkling. I'm like, sí, ama, como fuera. She always, Consuelo do this, Consuelo do that. She's got 10 freaking kids. How come she only remembers my name? <laughs> and you're, you're complaining and, you're, and you forget. Your mother's behind you. Consuelo! <laughs> what did you say? I, what did I say? I love you. <laughs> so I said, mija, she said, these beautiful words. She said, fíjate, hija, fíjate en esta manos. Her hands were crooked from arthritis. And yet, she found a way to hold that bathroom brush. She said, fíjese bien, hija. Mi responsabilidad es este baño. For me, my responsibility is this toilet. Pero yo no nomás lo limpio así. I don't clean it just like that. Yo lo hago que brille, hija. I make sure that it sparkles. Y yo le pido un Dios muy grande, hija. I pray to a God que tú no tengas que hacer este trabajo. That you will not end up having to do this job. Pero nunca se avergüence de hacer un trabajo. Aunque sea limpiando baños. Don't you ever be ashamed of cleaning a toilet. Whatever job it is, do it so well 
that even when you're not there, your work will speak for you. That's who we are. I know that you come to Nave, you come to Nave because sometimes your well runs dry. I'm talking to those ELL teachers where you're like one or two in the whole school. I know, I know. I see you, I visit you, and you're the only, and you look like, like, ya, ya lo tienen todos así. Don't give up, do your job so well done. The best poetic justice is when our kids exceed expectations. That's, you, don't worry that they don't love you, that when you go to the faculty lunch, they don't invite you or whatever. Don't worry about that, don't worry. Eat your torta. Don't worry, you bring your kimchi, it don't matter. Teach people to see that you are here for the children. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that my parents did not have a PhD, but they had a PhD in life. And they raised me to respect every single soul that comes in my mind. I wanna thank Andrew. Andrew who put this mic on me today. Some people, I bet people come and go and never see Andrew. You wouldn't be able to listen without Andrew. <laughs> Gracias, Andrew. I love you, bro. I, but I did tell him, don't turn me on if I go to the bathroom. Don't, don't, don't do that, Vato, eh, because that's not nice. <laughs> well, I went to school, first grade, you know. That was my first feeling of different. My papi gives me mi taquito, sends me to school, my beautiful long hair, my little vestidito de la segunda, you know, from, they call it thrift store. I thought, Macy's undeveloped. Next time say that, and they'll wonder, where is it? <laughs> and then you take them. Uh, from Macy's Undeveloped, my cardboard in my shoes, and monolingual. Right? But kids like me from the street, we, we know how to survive, even by the time we're five. Not for real. You, you want leaders in your classroom? Find that kid that just pushes your button. <laughs> that is your class leader. Take that energy, make it work for you. Because I was that kid. So I learned to survive, and I found out who spoke English, at least more than me, more than okay. It was Aida. I said, Aida, eh, mira, tú me ayuda. She said, well, yeah, I help you. I said, mira, yo te traigo tortillas de mi casa. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, you can eat your ham and whatever cosa que comes. And she loved tortillas. She loved my mommy's tortillas. So she was my translator. You learn to navigate the system. <laughs> Today, Ida's on Weight Watchers, but that's her problem. <laughs> that's not my problem. So we go into first grade, Ida is my champion, right? And a beautiful teacher, I love you teachers, I love you, but you know, you're a little, I mean, you know, y'all are interesting creatures. <laughs> and she's like, class! I say, oh, yeah, ¿qué dijo? No, no, está hablando, she's talking to her, está hablando con todos. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to learn our names. <laughs> ¿Qué dijo? ¿Qué vas a aprender tu nombre? Ah, okay. He says, when I call your name out, you will go to the board and you will write your name. Dije, ¿cómo está la cosa? Cuando te hable, Chelo, vas al pizarrón. Ah, okay. Sure enough, I'm waiting, right? And it happened, this moment, the aha moment. 
Consuelo Castillo. Y que brinco, presente maestra para servirle. Just... I start walking back. She said, just come, go to the board. So I look at her, I said, good little boy. I was like, ah. So I'm on the board. She said, now you listen to me, young lady. I said, and I look where? Down. She grabbed my jaw. She said, now you will listen to me when I speak to you. And I'm going to tell you right now, your name is Connie. She said, se equivocó. She, 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 she says, now you learn to write Connie on the board. You learned your letters. So what do you think a kid like me does? I put the chalk down. I say, yo no soy Connie de nadie. <laughs> she was, I'm not, this is classroom management. She wrote and I said, yeah, you will listen to me or you are going to listen to the principal. And she wrote this long letter. And then she folded it and stapled it a thousand times, like I could read. <laughs> Go see the principal. So you know what happens though? Kids like me, we use that as a stage. We don't need to fill our schools with alternative education. We don't need to fill our schools with sending them to juvie. We just need to understand that our kids are frustrated because they have never been understood. And never been understood. So what do you think I did? She put me in the, set, in the middle of the hallway. And what do you think kids like me do? I, may, I turned it into a show. I said, orale, ves? Only I get to see the principal, man. <laughs> Nobody else does but me today. <laughs> I had a beautiful principal, Mrs. Trevino. She, I took her an hour to open the note. And she spoke phonetically, you know, phonetically. She goes, what is wrong with Connie? I said, okay, well, I'm going to practice. I don't know. Because, verdad, I don't know her. And she goes, ay Dios mío. Then I knew then that was my, that was my escape. They said, Miss, usted habla español, me permite que le hable español? She said, ay mijita, ¿qué te pasa? Connie's less letters. They said, Miss, and if you'll just show the picture of my parents, I, I want to. I said, Miss, mi mami, she has problems. People call her La Loquita, but she's not, she's sick. See, I was too young to understand mental depression. Many of our kids don't understand alcoholism. Many of our kids don't understand that a gang is not their new family. Many of our kids are sitting in special ed and they don't know why. Many of our kids, our girls, struggle with moms who can't connect with them. And we condemn them because they get pregnant. But I thank mi viejo. He taught me to forgive. He said the world can only get better on the day you forgive. Perdónale a tu madre, hija. Sí, poverty. It's like a lab. Research doesn't always capture the spirit. It can't quantify it, nor can it qualify it properly. Poverty is not that we don't know, we just don't know what you want us to know. But we know, we're creative, we're innovative. We'll hold on to our families. 
even if it's ravaged by drugs, even if it's ravaged by all of the ills of society, we never stop believing that tomorrow, mañana, it's got to get better. We pray to a God every day. When PhDs talk about poverty being such a closed system, it's not a closed system. My father never got up in the morning and said, Híjole, today I get to tell my children they're poor and stupid. What father would even think something like that? Did he not come into school? No, he did not. Why? Because every parent program that was designed was not designed for my community. The PTA does not address our needs. But they were my familia, and I carried my mother's name. And so my principal hugged me. She said, ay, Dios mío, ¿qué estamos haciendo con estos niños? What are we doing to these children? So she wrote a note back. She said, don't worry, mija, you will stay consuelo. I said, miss, click, 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 click. <laughs> she said, and she came down to my eye level. She said, mija, I trust you. How often do we trust the students? How often do we ask them to see as leaders the vision and then the mission of helping them not just to shape their lives, but to free their families. Ladies and gentlemen, I realized through my life I was angry. Today, just uh, 48 hours ago, we worked with 50 children in Imperial Valley. We're very proud of that. I wasn't even there because I believe that the next generation needs to learn how to lead. And with your permission, I'd like to bring the next generation. Understand, Vanessa, Tippy, Roy, come on up here, young men and women. These are the young men and women, over 10,000 of them. They're the ones that we have to educate and prepare. There's Roy, he thinks he's Papi Chulo, but he's not. <laughs> There's Tippy and Miss me, Mami Vanessa. Come on up here, babies. See, sometimes you may wonder, will they ever get through? Will they exit out of ESL? Will they get to the next step? Will they go to college? Will they fulfill their dreams? You see, Roy was homeless with a nine-year-old and a two-year-old. And one day he came for food, and I was speaking. Roy went back, still angry, and we met again, finally. Tippy has her master's in bilingual anthropology. Vanessa. She's the one, the bravest of all. She stayed four years, almost four, verdad, right, mija? Sí, in Chicago. Five, ah, bueno, pues who's counting? <laughs> Today, all these young men and women have their bachelor's or their master's. Sí se puede. Sí se puede. And today, they have designed all these curriculums through their lens, and today, they are going out and changing the world by whatever way they do. Vanessa on a community college campus, Tippy looking for her PhD, Mijo who has been able to heal his family and graduated from my own university. And so as I think about the future, I know that for oftentimes you're fighting these big fights. But please, 
Don't give up. They will get there. The Luises will change their schools around. They'll get those PhDs. And yes, they will help NAVE reach even higher heights. To our children, the Hmong in Minnesota, to our children, our Navajo, our Pueblo, to our African brothers and sisters in Omaha, to our Bosnian children in Vermont, all of our children are already resilient. They've had to live in the streets. They've had to deal with fathers and mothers. And so we can teach them. So please help me thank the next generation of leaders. Thank you, Niwa. You can go. Valen. Valen mucho. Okay, get to work. <laughs> Noten de chulos. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I will simply close. I had it all. Out of poverty, I wanted the car that moved, <laughs> the credit card that had my name, until my mother came. And that is the last image I'm going to leave on the screen. You see, in 1948, Things got so bad on the border. My papi moved up north with my brothers. They found a job, but no home. And the only place they could live was in a boxcar, in a place called Sterling, Illinois. And for five years, my mommy raised her children in a car like that, along with other ESL, bilingual, monolingual at the time from Czechoslovakia. You see, they didn't see difference. They saw a need to survive. But my mother, the story goes, wanted curtains. And she told my papi these words. Viejo, a ver cómo le haces, pero va a poner cortinas. That's darling in English. And my mother didn't know what to do. I mean, her father didn't know what to do, so he went to a welder and he says, Oye, eh, la vieja wants to put up curtains. He said, Hey, Castillo, there are no windows. <laughs> he goes, I know, you want to tell her? <laughs> he goes, uh, She's Mexican, right? He goes, Yeah, no, let's figure it out. <laughs> they soldered some pipes. My mother put her curtains. And so I leave you with these words. When my papi said to my mommy, Oye, Chelo, ¿por qué quieres cortinas, vieja? Why do you want curtains? A window. The story is my mommy got up and she grabbed her Biblia. She grabbed her Bible. She said, Dios nos ha mandado aquí. God has sent us here para que tú puedas trabajar for you to be able to work. Pero yo no creo en esto aquí nomás. I do not believe in the year and now. Porque yo tengo una visión. I have a vision. I want my children to ask me, Mami, ¿qué está más allá? De esa cortina. And they might see a wall today. But it's my responsibility, como es la tuya, that to teach our children que hay mucho más allá que esta pared. Con trabajo duro y honrado. I want them to work hard and I want them to be good. But my children will not end their lives in a steel box. They will move on. So ladies and gentlemen, of my 10 brothers and sisters, democracy is precious to us. And of my 10 brothers and sisters, eight of us are veterans. 
because we don't want anybody to say that that immigrant came here to take anything. On the contrary, this country would not function without an immigrante. And so I leave you with these words. Yo no vengo a ver si puedo, sino que porque puedo, vengo. It's not about whether I can, but because I can, I will, and we must continue to tell our children que si se puede. I love you, Nave. Take care. Que Dios la bendiga. Verdaderamente un privilegio tener a Consuelo con nosotros, toda una inspiración. Nos ha llenado esta mañana el corazón y está este aplauso yo creo que, que viene a simbolizar eh, eh, esto que ella nos ha dejado, la inspiración de seguir adelante, no importa los retos. No sé si alguien más de ustedes quisiera tomar la palabra en este momento. She's making me cry too. <laughs> Wasn't that great? Her speech brings back so many memories. And I think everybody in this room today is an elementary school teacher. <laughs> Let's give her another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Consuelo Castillo Kickbush, Lieutenant Consuelo Castillo. I'm going to give the phone back to our distinguished executive director, Santiago. Uh, I want to say to all of you that I am so honored on behalf of the NABE board to recognize mi colega, mi hermana, mi boricua, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Consuelo Castillo Kickbush uh, for amazing work she has been doing across this country for many, many decades. And you see the passion, you see her heart, you see her authenticity, her sincerity. So on behalf of our amiga, nuestra hermana, nuestra colega, Nabe wants to celebrate her in 2014 as our passionate, passionate Nabe leader. And I will take my pin off of my lapel and pin it on this amazing, amazing hermanita. She is now a honorary lifetime member of NAVE. On behalf of all the children, from the Campo Migrantes to the urban schools, where they often feel, pa que, what for? To all the children of all the many backgrounds, even I think of the child from Vietnam who thanked me for saving his grandpa, for he knew my brother was in Vietnam. This is what we're all about. To Mr. Cooper, that white dude with the glasses <laughs> that taught me English and helped me. To the children around the world, let's teach them they can change it. Gracias. Y con esto damos por terminado nuestro programa. Muchísimas gracias y de nuevo un homenaje a ustedes que hacen tanto por nuestros niños. Don't go yet, don't go yet. I know we're running a little late, a little late, but that's okay, it's worth it. It's all worth it. I'd like to um, give a round of applause to the people that have put 
this conference together. As, because I think it's one, been one of the greatest conferences, NABE conferences I've been to in the last few years. And they are probably not here, they're probably working, but if you see them, tell Nilda Aguirre what a wonderful job she has done. <laughs> tell Ana Hernandez, Dr. Ana Hernandez of the University of California at, <clears throat> at San Marcos to tell her and tell her what a wonderful job she has done. And tell Monica Navas, what a wonderful job here she has done. You'll find them all around the registration booth. Also, I'd like to announce that we do have a dance tonight, the Presidential Gala at the Marriott San Diego Ballroom, starting at 7, starting at 7. And don't forget to register early for the 2015 conference in San, I'm, I'm sorry, not San Diego, in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the 2016 in Chicago, Illinois, my hometown. So have a wonderful rest of what's left of the conference, and we will see you next year.